All right, let's dive into pulmonary edema. When we're talking about pulmonary edema, what we're talking about is uh, is edema inside the lungs. Okay, and this difference differs from plur pleural effusions in that pleural effusions are fluid outside the lungs, putting pressure on the lungs so they're not able to expand properly. Plur uh, pulmonary edema is fluid backed up inside the lungs, inside of the airways, inside the alveolar spaces. Um, so, what can cause pulmonary edema? Uh, the main cause is typically something due to cardiac origin. Um, so, such as a, some form of heart failure, whether this is after a myocardial infarction or due to just uh, congestive heart failure, uh, what happens is the heart is not able to effectively pump and the fluid, the, the blood in the body, and and blood gets backed up into the lungs, and then the extra fluids end up leaking into the alveolar spaces. Uh, this can also be due to fluid overload, especially in the elderly. If a patient's getting a uh, uh, IV fluids or blood and they're getting fluids too quick and the heart isn't able to compensate for the extra fluids, it can back up into the lungs. Um, other causes would be uh, barbiturates or head injury, or barbiturate overdose, head injury, sepsis, but the primary causes would be something cardiac in origin. So, what are signs and symptoms that someone has pulmonary edema? Well, uh, they're going to have the telltale sign is they'll be coughing and their sputum is going to be pink and frothy. And so what this pink frothy sputum is, is you got the fluid backed up into these lungs and it's got traces of blood in it which make it pink. And it's frothy because it's mixed with air and mixed with the stuff inside the alveolar spaces. And so it comes out as pink and frothy. Then when you go and actually listen to your lungs you're going to hear crackles. When you're listening over the heart you may hear a gallop. Uh, the S3 sound. The difference between S3 and S4 is S3 is a gallop, so one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Uh, the difference uh, between S4 would be Tennessee, 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 and there's that delay. So you may hear an S3 gallop uh, while you hear those crackles. They're going to have decreased oxygen saturations because the oxygen isn't able to transition if it's full of fluid. It's not be able to go through the capillary spaces. So they're going to have hypoxemia. They're going to have increased respiratory rate and increased heart rate, trying to compensate for that uh, hypoxemia. And they're going to have shortness of breath because they're having trouble getting air in and out because it's full of fluids. Uh, these patients also, as you imagine, if you're having trouble breathing, they'd have anxiety. And uh, eventually they can lead to confusion once the uh, O2 levels drop significantly. So treatment. Well, first thing you want to do is get them into a high Fowler's position, and that way uh, you have that best chance for lung expansion. You're going to want to put some oxygen on them to give them as much oxygen as possible. Uh, at this point, it's kind of an emergency. Uh, you may want to even go as far as using a mask. Uh, the patients at this point are going to need diuretics to help get the extra fluids off of their body. So typically, it's going to be IV uh, diuretics. Uh, they may want to put a Foley in shortly after so that way you can keep track of the input and output. Uh, the patient also is probably going to be fairly sick and isn't going to want to be getting up. Uh, the patient, you're going to want to slow their IV fluids so that, or, or stop them if they're getting too much fluids, whether that's blood or, or uh, normal saline. Uh, you, they may need intubation, and so uh, be prepared for intubation if the doctor uh, it, it believes that's necessary. Uh, morphine is also often used here. It does two things. One, it, it decreases anxiety for the patient uh, but it, so that they can breathe uh, with better patterns. And it may also uh, cause some vasodilation. And so you want to have that, that plus vasodilators may help uh, open the blood vessels so that it can uh, transition through the lungs easier. You also want to may use inotropes, which are medicines such as um, uh, lenoxyl, which are medicines such as digoxin, uh, which are going to help the heart to pump more effective and it's going to increase cardiac output. And uh, antihypertensive might be as uh, useful as well because it might open up and vasodilate those vessels uh, in su such a sense that it will uh, allow the blood to to move more effectively out of the lungs. And so this is pulmonary edema. Uh, so like I said, you want to get them go ahead high fowler so they have good airway and then the oxygen. So remember your ABCs and uh, make sure you call the doctor and await more orders after that. But this is pulmonary edema.